Hi and welcome back to Bo Sickler Groom. Well as I'm sure some of you would already know, I had a visit from a big fish lad, uh, Paul, a couple of weeks ago. He came down to pick up some fish and did a video on what I was actually keeping. Uh, so if you haven't already seen that one, if you go over to his channel, Big Fish Lad, uh, he, he's got it on there, so it makes quite interesting viewing. Um, but anyway, the, when he was coming down, I was going through my archive, some old DVDs that I had uh, to give him to have a look at. Um, so I actually found one. It was the fish room from uh, from 15 years ago, July 2007. So I lent him the video and he watched it and said, why don't you put it up on YouTube? So over the last week or so, I've managed to suss out how to convert it into an MP4 format. Uh, so I've done a voiceover on it and it's quite long. So I've actually broke it up into a few bits. So this is part one of Bill Sickler Room back in July 2007. Well, let's take a look down memory lane. So this is Bill Sickler room 15 years ago in July 2007. So it's a long time since I've watched this DVD. So I thought we'll watch it together and I'll do a voiceover as to what fish I was keeping at the time. So this is the Paracromus Maragwens, the Jaguar Cichlids. So I actually got these, these were an F1 pair, um, but I actually got a load of fry from Oddball Express, uh, Ian Jordan. So he shipped me some fish and he put a bag of fry that he had in there so th there was about 10 or 12 fry so we grooved them on and um, jaguars being jaguars they picked each other off and i was left with the pair so i actually had this pair for about 10 years and like as regular as clockwork every month the uh they laid eggs and the, the fry hatched so there was thousands of fry so th they had up to about three thousand fry a time so as you can imagine, uh, I didn't grow too many of them on, uh, otherwise I'd, I just would have flooded the market with them. Um, but yet yeah, you can see in this tank, so there's some fry there, so it looks like these are a few days old. Um, what happened with these ones eventually, uh, the female passed away after about 10 years and the male just pined away. Uh, he stopped eating, got really thin and passed away a couple of months later. So it was really sad, but... Yeah, there was not much I could do because like, you couldn't put any other fish in with them because they'd been together so long. So yeah, they shared the four foot tank um, yeah, for all those years. So yeah, they, as you can see, what I was feeding them on, uh, it was chopped up mussels, prawns, there was a bit of bloodworm in there. Um, it's what I used to feed most of the fish at the time. Um, the, the local uh, shop to myself, it was uh, like a frozen shop and you used to be able to get all the stuff quite cheap. So yeah, you cut it all up and that's what I used to feed them on. So this tank, if I can remember, um, it's the Amphilophus lion sai and some Vehar uh, St. Spillum, I think they are, and some uh, Chucko God Manny, as they were called at the time. So these fish as well these are all either wild or f1 so what i used to do i used to get all the fish from uh, from jeff raps uh, tangled up in cichlids so ian jordan used to uh, bring shipments in a, a few times a year and um, so it'd be through the forums if anyone remembers forums before facebook groups um so yeah the forum that i used to be quite active on was cichlids of the uh, the southeast uh, that was run by um by dan vaughan um, so yeah, I met quite a few people on there, um, like Graham Evans from Wharf Aquatics being one, Ian Jordan being another, uh, Dan himself. So yeah, but we used to get together and uh, give Ian the list of what we wanted and he used to ship them in and he used to travel over from Liverpool to Leicester a couple of times a year to pick them up. So yeah, that's where most of the fish in the fish room come from. Obviously there's some in there from Wharf, from Pier, from Maidenhead Aquatics stuff i'd picked up from auctions but yeah the majority of them were from um tangled up in cichlids so yeah i think i think that's a pike there as well so that would be a, a wild real nanny pike uh, I, was, I was keeping quite a, a few pikes at the time so yeah the, in the fish room itself so this is when i had all the tanks running so there's about 40 tanks all together um, there was 18 small ones and the rest of them were uh, with the bigger ones so 
On to the next tank. I can't remember what was in this tank. I can't quite make out what it is. It might have been a Texas cichlid. Yeah, I can't, I can't really see. Um, when I was watching this a couple of days ago, um, yeah, he, he actually doesn't come out, so I'm still none the wiser as to what I was keeping in this tank. Yeah, you might notice the the decor in the tank, all the pots, all the rocks, they're still all exactly the same as what I use now. <laughs> Um, so all I did after I closed the fish room down, it, it was shut down for about for about ten years. Uh, just cleaned it all up again and uh, like got going again. So at this time, I was actually using the it was the centralized systems. So I had two centralized systems. Uh, all these tanks that we're going to look at today were on one of them, and I used to space heat the room. So you might see the reflection of uh, one of the heaters uh, as we go as we go around. Yeah, so this fish does, doesn't want to come out and show itself. Now, there's another one there, so there was a pair of them. Obviously really shy, uh, having the camera in the face. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what they were. Yeah, 15 years ago was a long time, trying to think back that far. <laughs> yeah, on to the next tank anyway. So in this tank, uh, there's a pair of Nicaragua Gwents. Uh, th these were an F1 pair, if I remember right. And there was a group of the, the Spilarum, um, the, as they're now called, the, uh, the, the Crypto Hero Spilarum. So yet this pair of Nicaragua Gwents, I think I got these from Wharf. I, I think I went there once and they used to have massive tanks at the, at the front as you went in. They were about 10 foot long. And they had the um, they had the trio Nicaragua Gwents. Uh, so talking to the lads there about how much they were, so they told me the price. So I said, "Yeah, I'll have them." And it took them about forty minutes catching them in this big long tank. <laughs> I bet they were sorry I come in in the end. But yeah, it it, it was an F one pair if I remember right. Uh, yeah, and I got them breeding uh, and got loads of fry off them. Uh, so. You see the fry on one of the later videos, which I think is going to be in part two. So yeah, there was a tank full of fry. But yeah, they're, they're definitely Dispolaris. So I was breeding those for fun at the time as well. Yeah, so you can see all the fish I had there at the time. They, they, like it used to be a mix of like frozen foods, like the bloodworm, mysis. And I used to mix in the the chopped up prawns, uh, chopped up mussel, um, yeah, did all that sort of thing. It used to be a really good diet for them. And then I used to mix in some greens as well. Yeah, fantastic male, this one. I, I think it got to about eight inches, is it eight or nine inches. Hmm. Onto the next tank. Uh, so these are the uh, the, the, the Argentina. Um, are, are they still under the hay or have they been moved? I can't quite remember. <laughs> uh, but I did have a trio of these as well at the time. Uh, there was the spare female Nicaragua Gwents in this tank. And I can't quite remember what those other cichlids are. Yeah, I can't remember what they, they are. They, they weren't and Spillum or Melanorus. Um, yeah, I can't remember what they are. They might have been an Amphilophus type. Uh, I was keeping quite a few Amphilophus around about this time. Obviously, the lion side. Yeah, I just can't remember what they are. But yeah, you, you notice uh, that, that pipe there, so that's the one that I've got in with the pollen eye at the moment, uh, that the female hides in. Yeah, there's probably uh, some other species in here as well. Yeah, I just can't remember what they are. <laughs> yeah, so in this tank, what we've got, it looks like there's some more lion eye. There's the Neotropolis Neotropolis. So this was a wild group that I had, so these come over from Tangled Up in Cichlids and I was quite successful breeding those. 
Uh, and it looks like some rainbow cichlids as well, the, um, the multispinosa. So it was F1s of those, if I remember right, that I had. Uh, and yeah, they used to breed for fun. And yeah, there's a, a jaguar cichlid, uh, one of the, the fry off those. So what used to happen uh, with the fry, particularly the jaguars, because it was an overflow on the tank, the, uh, all the fry used to end up in the sumps. So yeah, you quite often had to go through and uh, like net out the, the, the fry when they got to about a quarter of an inch in the sump and then they either choose to grow them on or just use them as feeders. But yeah, the Neotropolis, so they're actually breeding in this tank. Eh? You can notice the dark coloration on the ones in the corner under the bogwood. So I think this was the first time I'd bred them. And at the time, if I recall, I think this was the only group that was in the country because they, they hadn't been around for a while. And there was only myself that brought them in from Tangled Up in Cichlids. So we were pretty sure I had the only group in Neotropolis at the time. Yeah, so see the chunks of food, they are quite big, but yeah, they just used to pick at them and uh, they disappear in no time. Well, thanks for watching. I'm sure you'll agree there was some interesting fish there in part one. Uh, I'll put part two together and put it up in a couple of days.